Okay, so we're going to take a closer look at the front panel of the Heritage SVT CL. And like I said earlier, it's pretty much based off of our classic SVT CL. Uh, all the EQ points and everything are, are basically the same thing. Uh, cosmetics and what goes into the amp is where everything is different. But let's take a quick look at what we've got. Basically, we're going to start with a 0 dB pad. Input. Minus 15 dB. We'll go back to 0 here. And next we have gain control. Now I'm going to skip over the EQ section real quick here and talk about gain and master. Let's say I want an overdriven wide open SVT sound. I would dial up the gain and control the volume with my master. I want just the opposite. I'll bring the gain control down and I'll dial up the master. That gives me a nice clean SVT sound. That's the power of just the gain control and the mass control combined. Now let's talk about EQ real quick. Ultra high, you've got a plus 9 dB um, at 8K. I'll bring the volume up a little bit. So I'm boosting 8K by 9 dB. Ultra low is a 2 dB boost at 40 hertz and a minus 10 dB cut at 500 hertz. So I'm kind of boosting my lows and then scooping my mids. So that in com combination with the highs, I can get a fairly decent slap sound out of it. I'll take those back out. Uh, bass control, plus or minus 12 dB at 40 hertz. mid-range, I've got a 10 dB boost and a 20 dB cut, and that is dependent on which frequency I choose with the frequency control. So let's say I boost by 10 dB, I can select one of five frequencies here, 220, 450, 800, 1.6, and then 3K, and I'm boosting those by 10 dB, or I can cut them by 20 dB. So if you have the mid-range control straight up and you're going through all five frequencies and you're not hearing any difference, that's because you're not cutting or boosting anything. And then last but not least, treble control. You've got a 15 dB boost and a minus 20 dB cut at 4K. And that's pretty much your whole EQ. But nice thing about an SVT, like I said before, is no matter where you put the controls, going to sound like a bass amp. So we'll set everything back flat, and there we go. Then obviously standby and power, standby power fault light. This is very important. Um, when it's red, the amp is on standby, and it'll, it'll flip to red here in one second. Okay, now I'm in standby. When I flip it up, it will switch to green, telling me I'm good to go. If for some reason I've got a faulty tube, or bad power coming from the wall, or a faulty transformer, or anything going on with the power section, this will actually put the amp in standby, and this light will start flashing green and red, telling you that there's something going on with the power section, so that you don't do any more damage to your transformers or your tubes. It's actually a very cool safety feature in, in the SVT. So that's the front panel. I'm going to flip it around. We'll take a look at the back panel. Okay, so I managed to get this guy turned around on the cabinet. It's still powered up and fired up live. So we're going to go left to right. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll get a close-up of the Heritage badge. Heritage 2010, Heritage SVT CL, uh, Promo 3, designed and assembled in the U.S. Like I said, this comes on all Heritage SVT CLs. They won't say Promo 3, obviously. Uh, but they will have a sequential number in the way that they were manufactured. Then AC line in, polarity switch, the fuse, 
And then here's a section that I don't know if everybody's familiar with or not, but this comes in really handy when you need to bias your amp. It's basically a user biasing section. And what it does is with the amp turned on, taken off standby, all fired up, uh, I do have it plugged into a load, and I'll show you that in a second. But um, you can adjust your bias. And as you'll see, there's a green LED, and you see the red LEDs just flashing on and off. If I back it all the way off, the green LED goes out. If I turn it all the way up, the green and the red LED both come on. So now I want to back that off just until that red LED goes out. And I know that side's biased. Same thing with the bias 2 control. If I turn clock, counterclockwise, it goes out, it's under biased. Clockwise, the red light goes on, it's over biased. And again, I want to just back it off until that red LED goes out. And now I know my power section is biased. And that's really handy whenever you're changing power tubes or as tubes get older, they start to degradate. You can consistently go back and check the bias on the amp and make sure that the power section is running as well as it should be running. So very useful feature. And this is standard on, like I said, the Heritage SVTCL, the Classic SVTCL and the SVT2 Pro. The SVT VR has something a little bit different, but it is a user biasing feature that we'll show you in the VR videos. Moving right along, slave out. This is if you want to daisy chain a number of SVTs. Uh, anybody that is using more than one SVT is my hero. What can I say? Uh, if you need more than one SVT, man, you're playing some pretty big arenas. Uh, also, the transformer balance line out, we'll get a chance to hear what that sounds like, as well as preamp out, power amp in. A lot of guys think that this is a, an effects loop, and it can be used as an effects loop, basically a send and a return. But the main function of this is, let's say you have a number of SVTs that you want to daisy chain together, but you want to control them all with one SVT. You would come preamp out of this being your master SVT to power amp in, of the next SVT. Then the master would govern the power section of all consecutive SVTs down the, train, down the chain. So preamp out the power amp in, preamp out the power amp in, preamp out the power amp in. That controls all the SVTs down the chain. The first SVT in the chain is the master and anything that you do on the front panel would control all the SVTs down that chain of SVTs. So again, that's if you are running more than one SVT. Uh, also very important, the impedance switch. Now I've got this plugged into a 4 ohm load, an SVT A10E, which is 4 ohms, so I've got it selected for 4 ohms. If I choose to run two 810 cabs or say two 4 ohm loads, two 410 HLFs, anything that's 4 ohms, if I'm running two of them, that gives me a 2 ohm load. I would want to switch this over to 2 ohms. Okay, so but right now I'm just running one SVT A10E. So I'm keeping it at four ohms. And then last but not least, two quarter inch speaker outs and a Neutrik speak on out. Now I'm using the quarter inch out uh, just for sake of ease. Um, it's easy to get in and out. But in 99% of my applications, I always, always, always use the Neutrik speak on out. There's no way that this can come unplugged unless you physically uh, throw the little thumb latch and then twist and pull it and that's especially useful in a tube amp Remember like I said anytime you're running a tube amp that's powered up You got to have it plugged into a speaker load Otherwise you will damage the output section the, the transformers and the power tubes So it's very important that you have this thing hooked up to a speaker load um, With the Neutrik, there's no way that that can come unplugged. So there you have it uh, That's the front and the back panels of the Heritage SVTCL Cabinets also get a significant upgrade too. All cabs are made from 15 millimeter 11 ply birch plywood. That's pretty much standard with all Ampeg cabs, by the way. But both Heritage cabs also feature custom made USA stamp frame eminence drivers that were designed and voiced after our original Onico drivers that we used to use in our flatback cabinets. To top that all off, both cabs get the same badging as the CL, as well as the same hang tags and final QC check. On the back, each cab features dual speak on as well as dual quarter inch inputs. The 410 HLF features a variable L pad 
attenuator for the Eminence APT50 one inch compression horn that's out front. Being that the A10 doesn't have a horn, for more on how our A10s are built, by the way, check out my A10 video. We've added a dual feature which allows you to split the cabinet and separate the top 410s from the bottom 410s. And this can be useful in running bi-amped or running effects.